you realize your tremor has gone away and um, you're given a new life. And, and I can't even begin to put into words how wonderful that feels. It saved me. It changed my life. It pushed the reset button on my life. Welcome to Curing with Sound, a podcast presented by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. I'm your host, Allison Preston Smith. Nearly 1 million people in the U.S. are living with Parkinson's disease, and approximately 80% of those diagnosed experience Parkinson's related tremor at some point in their life. Today, we're talking with John Dutton, a patient living with both Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. While his MS has been manageable, John struggled with muscle stiffness and tremors, significantly affecting his daily life. In 2022, he turned to focus ultrasound, and now, years later, he remains tremor-free. Welcome to the podcast, John. Hey there, Allison. How are you? Good, good. So glad you could join us. So, John, when you first learned you had Parkinson's, were you diagnosed right away or did it take several years of doctor visits and mounting symptoms to become diagnosed? Yeah, that's a great question, because I don't think uh, diagnosing Parkinson's is all that easy because it could be essential tremors. It could be MS. I'm a bit of a uh, neurological unicorn because I have MS. And Parkinson's. And the tremor started on your right side, is that correct? Well, it started, the Parkinson started with just the arm didn't swing properly. It was just bizarre. It just kind of was stiff and kind of didn't swing the way it normally should. So I thought I had a shoulder injury, so I had that checked out, and they said, yeah, it could be a shoulder impingement, but um, it didn't go away. So then I started to get muscle twitches on the right side, just these little freaky little twitches, you know, you think nothing of it. And, and the twitches elevated, and then the tremors started, and when it's just on the right side, And you notice your hand shaking just a teeny bit and more and more and more and more. And then I knew something was up. And how long did that take when you noticed that stiffness in your shoulder and you thought it was a shoulder injury? How long was it from that point to the point where you were having a tremor? Oh, that's a great question. I think it was about between six months and a year. You know, like I say, this thing seems to start slowly and then escalate. It just never lets you go. And how is it impacting your daily life? Was it getting progressively more difficult to do things like, you know, just drink from your coffee cup or hold on to something? Well, first and foremost, it scares you because I had MS and I realized something's up. Um, and uh, who knew it was Parkinson's, but, um, they figured it out and it was during COVID too. So I couldn't, couldn't fly to go to the neurologist and stuff like that. So it's in your mind that something's not right here. And, um, I did my self diagnosis and I realized, yeah, it could be Parkinson's. And it seemed odd that I would have MS and Parkinson's, but I, I did. And were you, I know you golf, so were you noticing before that, you know, you would go to the golf course and were having more difficulty or were you having difficulty writing or anything? Yes, all of the above. Everything, once the tremor started, uh, they escalated pretty quickly and they, we, we went through every drug regimen there was, I think there was four or five. They did nothing for me. They made me feel like a zombie just sitting on the couch all day. And they didn't attack the tremors whatsoever. Um, So I was kind of a special case. Um, And it affects your daily life. Everything you do is, you know, you try to learn how to do things left-handed. Everything is shaking and it's frustrating and it's arduous. Putting on your socks is a pain. Um, writing, you immediately find your, your handwriting becomes little teeny, like a little mouse. 
And uh, it's just bizarre stuff, and it's frustrating, and it continues to grow on you. And um, it affects your daily life 100%. You know, you go to sleep, and it takes 20 minutes to keep to get the hand to stop shaking. And so your sleep is uh, upsetting. So, um, yeah, and that's why I'm so glad I had focused seltzer sound treatment because it, it saved me. It changed my life. It pushed the reset button on my life. And when did you first hear about focused ultrasound treatment? Did that come from your neurologist or was it something you came across? Oh, that's a good story because I got the official diagnosis for Parkinson's was on a Friday. And Sunday, I went to go upstairs and I found the Boston Globe sitting on the um, table. And in the lifestyle section, they had a thing on focused ultrasound surgery and a guy who had it done for essential tremors. It was almost divine that someone put that there. So I read it and I was like, yeah, wow, there is hope. This sounds like a miracle. And um, I always had that in the back of my mind. You know, if these drugs don't work and um, other options don't work, I, you know, I'll investigate this and then boil down to that. And that, that was the beautiful thing. Were you skeptical when you first heard about focus ultrasound or were you a believer right away? I wasn't skeptical at all because um, I did my research and it was being done by um, the number one research hospital in the country, Brigham and Women's, by Harvard trained doctors. So I knew I'd be in good hands and um, I had a great set of doctors and uh, they did a very good job of explaining what each thing does and, you know, what the options are. So I was extremely happy and not skeptical whatsoever. So can you walk me through when you were at the hospital, what it was like, um, the different steps you had to take, what you were feeling at the time? Well, you get there the day before and you have some blood tests done and they also have to <laughs> check to see how thick your skull is. Because if your skull is too thick, then you can't have the operation. It wouldn't work. And I was worried because my father kept telling people, every, everybody, that I had a thick skull. So, <laughs> I, yeah, they said I was a really good candidate based on the skull thickness. And the fact that it was on one side was good, too. So I became a pretty good candidate for it. You know, not everybody is a good candidate, but I was an excellent one. And what was the next step after that? You go home to the hotel and you don't eat for 24 hours. Oh, you get your head shaved, too. And um, my family showed up with a bunch of clippers and stuff like that. And we had a head shaving party the night before. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's, I made a documentary and it's all in there. It's pretty funny. <laughs> and then walk me through the next day when you were getting the treatment done. Did you feel anything? Were you aware of it working right away? Oh, yeah, that was very interesting because they, they do uh, MRIs, the more intensive MRIs uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, and then they're, they're looking for the perfect spot that they need to ablate. And when the ablation happens, the, you know, they inform you, OK, we're about to do the ablation. It's like wild. It's like being on a roller coaster because you feel like your legs are going up in the air. And wow, it's 20 seconds. And uh, you can tell right away that they found the right spot because your hand goes from this the stillness right away and it's the feeling of joy is unbelievable. Right. I'm sure it felt incredible just to notice within seconds, you know, you've had tremor for years at that point, right? Yes. And you realize, oh my God, this might be a new life for me. The rebirth, the reset, 
you know, they just did such a phenomenal job finding the spot. And they blast that for 20 seconds. And then they test you, you know, test your lips to see if there's any numbness. And um, you, you're you wide awake for everything. There's no drugs involved. And it's pain free, right? Uh, yes. Yes. The, the only pain you get is when they put the halo in your head because they want to screw it in a little bit. And there's a little bit of pain there, but it, they numb the spots up. So it's not too bad. And then what was it like immediately after treatment was completely done? You realized your tremor has gone away and hopefully it's going to stay away. And um, you're given a new life. And, and I can't even begin to put into words how wonderful that feels. It's like, ah. <laughs> and it's been two years now. You're still tremor free and doing well. Yes, and it's amazing. And every day you smell the roses and you think, God, everything has worked out so well and your life has changed immensely. Um, you mentioned earlier that you made a documentary about your experience. Why did you want to record, you know, step by step the entire process? I thought it would be fascinating. And I have a friend who's in the movie business and I pitched him on this and he said, yes, that's, this is amazing stuff. And so we filmed everything and then we even filmed the surgery or right in the operating room. And it's fascinating to watch. You got the best doctors in the world and they're performing surgery that is like something out of science fiction. We're going to throw some sound waves through a guy's skull and change his life in a minute's time. And it worked. And watching your documentary back, you know, is it strange to look at yourself, you know, when you had that tremor and see how far you've come now? Yeah, and you, I continually get the feeling of joy. It's it's a total reset on your life. And, you know, Parkinson's is a beast. And I wish everybody who is a potential candidate for this looks into it because I think Focus Ultrasound represents a future. It's not a cure, but it is a pretty good fix. So uh, if you're a candidate, um, please investigate this. Yeah. What would you say to people who are experiencing tremor, but they might be on the fence about getting focus ultrasound treatment? What would you say to them? Talk to your neurologist and make an informed decision. I think, like I put it in a documentary, I think the rewards outweigh the risks tremendously. And uh, be informed. Do your homework and ask your neurologist. Such good advice, John, and thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you, Allison, and thanks to the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. This episode of Curing with Sound has been presented by the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. If you would like to learn more about Focused Ultrasound or the Foundation, visit our website at fussfoundation.org. You can also sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media.